Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 8th of March with me Patrick Munley. The scale of the US Treasury sell-off remains the only game in town after last week in which the Fed Chair Powell expressed little concern over higher US yields and the February non-farm payrolls came in stronger than expected. Speed of the rise in US yields is impacting positioning, especially short dollar positioning. And until we begin to see a little stability in treasuries, the risk is that the bear market bounce in the dollar runs a little further. In the week ahead, US Treasuries will have to weather February CPI, year over year headline rising to 1.7% from 1.4% on Wednesday and PPI on Friday. US Treasuries may well also face headwinds from 10 year and 30 year auctions on Wednesday and Thursday, plus Michigan consumer inflation expectations on Friday. Here, five to 10 year US inflation expectations currently sit at 2.7%, and any higher might start catching the attention of the Fed. In all the unchecked rise in US Treasury yields can keep the dollar supported in the near term, but when Treasury yields find the right level, expect investors to jump back into the pro-recovery weaker dollar trades. However, it does seem there might be a little bit more to run just yet. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index has now traded in and tested the equality objective at 92.07. This is this A, B, C swing here. We did see some profit taking late Friday. We'll have to see now how that develops. I'd be looking for a three-way corrective move now to test the 9060 monthly pivot from above. Um, if we do see some follow through early in the week, watch for monthly range resistance coming in at 9257 and the descending trend line 9270. I expect this area to cap on that initial test. And like I said, looking for a three-way corrective move to test the monthly pivot from above. At this stage, only a loss of the trendline support at 89.95 would suggest that the fifth wave extension is underway. Uh, Jumping US yields uh, was finally enough to take out support at 119.50 on Friday in the euro. And until confidence emerges that treasuries have sold off enough, a speculative market positioned reasonably long euro looks vulnerable. In effect, this rise in US yields has shaken long positions held in the defensive low yielders of first the Japanese yen, then the Swiss franc, and now it looks like the euro as well. Eurozone calendar this week centers on the ECB. Expect much focus on what Christine Lagarde thinks of the bond sell-off. Initially, the ECB seemed to be prepared to front load pet purchases to contain the rise in yields, although most recently ECB speakers have backed away a little from this concern. On that subject, Monday's APP report will again be scrutinized to see if pet activity did increase in the prior reporting week. For the ECB meeting itself, expect a modest downward revision to 2021 GDP forecasts and an upper revision to CPI forecasts, but probably not enough to make a material difference to the euro. The euro dollar is now trading just ahead of its equality objective versus this swing here, looking for a test of 118.50. Um, we have traded into the descending trend line support and we did see some profit taking on Friday, but looking ultimately for a test of 118.50 to 118.80. And then from there, I look for a three wave corrective move to ultimately test the monthly pivot from below at 120.89. Only a loss at this stage of 118.24 would suggest that we're heading for a test of the yearly pivot down to 117.17. It's a quiet week on the UK data front. Uh, market watchers expect January UK GDP released on Friday to fall by 5%, driven predominantly by the closure of several consumer service sectors. This is a backward looking indicator and should have limited impact on sterling, particularly in light of the fast vaccination and the anticipated strong economic rebound in the second quarter. Tensions over the UK unilaterally softening, uh, softening trade restrictions in the Irish Sea haven't hit sterling so far, with the general risk sentiment in the UK vaccination process dominating the sterling price action. So from a technical perspective, the uh, sterling has come in and retest this 137.60 area as support. We did see some uh, profit taking on Friday. Look really for, we need to see follow through back through the monthly pivot at 139.10 to give confidence that uh, we've completed a three-way correction here and we are heading higher. Um, if we don't get that, uh, that follow through to the upside, then what we'll be looking for is the equality objective versus this structure here. 
which would actually take us down into 136.50 and the ascending trend line support complete an equality swing and set up the next leg higher in sterling which should ultimately see us trading back through 140 and up into the 144 area so two key areas to watch a break of the monthly pivot from below here 139.10 would suggest that the correction is complete or we head lower into the 136.50 a quality objective and watch for bullish reversal patterns to set long positions. A loss of the 136.50 trendline support would open up the potential for a move down to test monthly range support at the 133.40 area. Once again, markets underestimated the size of the dollar yen rally. Perhaps it's because this sharp rise in US yields has yet to seriously undermine equity markets, which remain resolutely bid. In fact, it seems equity investors are quite happy to rotate into financials, enjoying steeper yield curves at the expense of tech. It's hard to see the uh, dyna that dynamic changing. Thus, uh, markets are braced, I think, for, uh, for further upside in dollar yen. As an aside, politicians in Tokyo must be enjoying this trade-weighted yen decline, standing in a good position for when the surge in foreign household savings gets spent. And new Japanese car uh, purchases are, uh, are booming. On the Japanese calendar is uh, January uh, BOP released on Monday. This looks uh, huge, near to 2 trillion yen per month. And a reminder that if the risk environment does briefly turn toxic, the Japanese yen should make a strong comeback. So from a technical perspective, on Friday, Jeff, the dollar yen tested into the monthly range resistance at 108.65, and we did see some profit taking. I'd look for follow through now to see a retest of the 107.50 from above. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions, ultimately targeting a move through the 2020 high at 109.85. Only a loss of the 107 handle would suggest a deeper correction back to the projected um, tr ascending trendline support at 106. The Reserve Bank of Australia's interventionism in the bond market will remain a key focus in the week ahead. After the big purchase operation uh, last Monday, the bank has kept purchases lighter later last week, despite the fresh spike in yields. However, I don't think this is signalling a change in stance and I expect the RBA to continue intervening in the market as necessary to defend its yield target. The week ahead is not very busy data-wise, but some focus will be on RBA Governor Philip Lowe's speech on Tuesday. Comments related to the bank's yield curve defence may, however, have contained the market impact. Verbal intervention would not be seen as very relevant unless a very strong commitment to defending yields is made, after the bank has already deployed operational intervention. From a technical perspective, as the uh, Aussie dollar holds this 76 area support, I'm looking for a three-way correction to retest uh, offers at the 78 level. Uh, from there, we may see another leg lower, or the correction may be complete for the Aussie dollar, and we can be looking at a retest of the prior highs at the AC handle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 8th of March. And be sure to join me on Thursdays at 1 p.m. UK time for live trade and market analysis. Thanks very much, and I hope you have a great week.